He's a young man with big ambitions and a big personality. He told us at the press conference he wanted to become the greatest distance runner in history. It is a punchy aspiration, but so far in his young career, he is delivering. Monaco, of course, was lucky, uh, you know, it was a great event for me and uh, I was kind of nervous, of course, and I was kind of panicking. I kind of sometimes was uh, in this split that I would not make the world record. But then, of course, you know, what came to my mind was that uh, I had announced that I was going to attack the world record, so I was like, no, I, I said it myself, so I, I, I need to show it and, uh, you know, let people believe that uh, something can happen. Mm, it was actually, it was not really so difficult because I had actually done enough training in, uh, with my coach, with my training partners, of course, who, we've been doing cra crazy sessions. Actually, I, I did like uh, 12 special sessions before Monaco 5K. All of them are spectacular performances and uh, spectacular world records that not anyone can touch. So, you know, having one is really, you know, special, you know, and if you can have two, it's more special, you know, yeah. The last year has been turbulent and very exciting for Joshua. He um, won the Diamond League final. On the back of that, he went to Doha to win the world title. He came here in Valencia to run a world record on the road. Then he moved on to the 5K on the road in Monaco. And he finished it off with another world record again in Monaco on the track 5,000 meter. It's been incredible. To go for the world record uh, 10,000 meter on the track in, in October is quite unusual. Um, our planning is also unusual because of the COVID pandemic we, we had to change the schedule. When World Half Marathon moved from March to October we had to reschedule goals and together with Adi and Joshua we decided that we wanted to try and attack the world record 10k. Uh, the way we set the schedule for Joshua is a combined effort. Uh, together with Adi and Joshua we discussed the goals and the plans for the season. Um, and we make a planning all together. After the uh, world record in uh, Monaco, uh, we make a few uh, changes in the, in the preparation for the 10,000 meters. But in my opinion, uh, training must be simple. So it's a little bit more in, in 10,000 meter pace that you are uh, doing the track sessions. And the, the, the long runs were a little bit uh, longer. Nice PRs, uh, of course, this season for you. Yeah. We have a small uh, discussion about the lights or the formation. Light, the first lamp of the green light. Yeah, I'm green. now coaching Joshua uh, for five years. And in about the first four years, I was going uh, on a regular basis to uh, Uganda for about uh, three, four weeks. Uh, in the last year, and also because of uh, the lockdown in Uganda, I was there more, for more than one year now full time. And uh, yeah, of course, that was very helpful for the fine-tuning of uh, the program. Uh, to be there, to talk always with the athletes, and uh, especially also with, uh, with Joshua. So, no, that was very helpful. And, and this is one of the reasons that Joshua has grown to this level. Go. The 
be the coach of Joshua is quite an easy job. Uh, it's, uh, as an athlete, as a person that is listening very well. Uh, when you tell something, give a good motivation, uh, then he's following uh, the direction that you are giving. For me, uh, as a coach, as a person, it's very important that I have a connection uh, with an athlete. For me, an athlete can be maybe very talented, but when I don't have a personal connection with the athlete, then uh, the, the cooperation between me and the athlete will be not very successful. Uh, with Joshua, I have a very good relation, connection, friendship. Uh, that's one of the reasons uh, that we are as a team, as a combination, uh, that we are also uh, we are very successful. Esta oportunidad surge pues, de una terrible situación que estamos eh, viviendo. Una seguridad a toda la gente eh, y sirva todo esto como una plataforma de promoción de los restaurantes para los que nos gustan los, los detalles. Del... Uh, although, uh, most... You know, the year has been so difficult and it started with the, the World Half Marathon Championship being uh, cancelled in, in March. And then uh, the next was, of course, the Olympic Games. It was really cancelled. So, but then, of course, it was a twist of events. And uh, of course, me and uh, my coach Adi Ruta and uh, Yuri, uh, we had plan A, plan B, and plan C. So w w when the World Half Marathon Championship, that was uh, plan A. Then the plan B was if the Olympics is cancelled, then we have plan C. And plan C was actually trying to attack the world records on the track. So I think we are halfway, you know. Welcome to, to Valencia. Thank you. <laughs> trying to discover if I can be uh, on course to become the greatest distance runner of all time. Managing Joshua through the years is like putting a puzzle together. Uh, he feels a lot of responsibility towards the community. Um, therefore, training and life balance sometimes is, is a difficult puzzle to, to lay. But now also with the help of Adi being there full time, we are able to set a more and more stable foundation for him in life. Uh, so he can focus better on training and on the thing he, he loves most and that's running. My dream is to break the world records one time in a truck and then I will be really, you know, be so grateful. It has been actually in my mind for a long time and uh, now to go and, uh, of course, go after the record tomorrow. It was to attack the world record in, uh, in Seven Hills in 2017. I came short with only three seconds. But then after that, of course, Every announcement, of course, every pronouncement for the world record, I've been going after it and, of course, I've been attacking the world record. So all this, uh, you know, is about uh, uh, having the right, the right people around you. Of course, uh, it starts with the management, you know, the coach, the, the, the teammates, you know, and the support. So that means uh, a lot of things, of course, is a combination of all this and uh, it builds up to something great, you know. It's actually, you know, one of the hard, hardest world records that I think uh, the closest person uh, to have ever run prior to the last 10 years is, I think uh, we've not had uh, so many guys come under, you know, 2630. So that tells you how special the record is. And uh, it's a, a superhuman performance that uh, one can still do that, you know. What makes Joshua unique is that he's determined, he's focused, 
And as a result, everything he does and he believes in is 100% score. Good evening and welcome to what promises to be a very special night of distance running. This is the NN Valencia World Record Day here in an intimate atmospheric Estadi del Turia in the heart of the city. Huge efforts from everybody involved to make sure tonight can happen safely and in accordance with all the rules. We are all set for two global stars taking on world records that have stood for more than a decade. I know Joshua now for six years and uh, the way he grew as, an, as a person has been quite a transformation. In the beginning he was a shy young man and now you can see by time his confidence is growing and you can see you know, a responsible um, father figure is stepping up. He's uh, the leader of the group. He is a guy who gives back to the community. He is a guy who has love and care for his family. Um, and he's very passionate about the things he wants to do and he believes in. I think it would, uh, it would really uh, mean the whole world to me, you know, to be really a special moment for me and uh, the running world, of course, to see that uh, a record is broken after a couple of uh, 15 years or 16 years down the road, so it would be really a uh, world to me. Tessa Betgide, third from the right-hand side. What an athlete. Silver medalist in the 10,000 metres last year. Bronze in the World Cross Country, but twice a World Junior Cross Country champion. And that really takes some doing. Here we go then. Does history beckon for Latessa Betgide? We will be watching the clock, but there is a reason that record of Tyrannish de Barbers has stood for 12 years. So, three seconds outside world record pace, so she's got a little bit of work to do at the moment, Latessa Mekide. Well, it's been brilliant so far. Beatrice Chipkoec has done a fantastic job taking her through 3,000 metres, but these laps now will really start to hurt. She's got a chance here, she really has. She's running brilliantly, her form has been maintained beautifully. She's a lovely flowing runner to watch. Now it's got to her. She's in uncharted territory here, because this young 22-year-old from Ethiopia is 400 metres away from glory. Natessa Bakhide driving for history driving for the line. It's going to be a new world record in Valencia. Unbelievable, 14.06. She has smashed a record that has stood for more than 12 years. There's the embrace for Beatrice Chetkoec. And in a year that's been so, so hard for so many people, what a moment of inspiration from a 22-year-old who has just run the race of her life. Joshua Cheptegei is poised and ready for his assault on history. The reigning world champion, the world cross country champion. And what a fantastic record he took from Kenanisa Bekele in August, over 5,000 meters. He'll be following a familiar figure of Roy Kuhnweg, his job to do the early pacemaking duties. This is really good from Roy. He's going to have to answer some 
savage questions. I was talking to his coach, Adi Ruta, and he was saying that Joshua has a massive appetite for pain. He says, I don't really need to equip him with any mental tools to try and cope with the pain. He's just born with a gift to take punishment, and that's what he's going to need to be able to do tonight. Matt Ramsden's done a good job here. 7.52, they are absolutely bang on world record pace at the moment. He needs Nicholas to keep going as long as he possibly can. This is the loneliness now of the long distance runner. Cheptegei is now on his own. He's being roared on though by a growing number of people sitting on the city wall. And you know what, I just noticed a little almost imperceptible acceleration there because I think he sensed that this is getting a little bit tight. It's a glittering list of who's who in terms of the all-time greats. And that's the kind of company that Joshua Cheptegei would be in if he can somehow keep this going. This is absolutely incredible. Wherever you're watching this in the world, I hope you're enjoying this because we're watching something really, really special here. 62.9 lap after lap after lap he's edging ever closer to a place in the history books he is standing as a symbol of all that is great he's pouring his heart and soul into this record attempt into this journey to greatness that he is relentlessly pursuing he's just got to keep driving can anita mckayley's time 26 17 We've seen one world record. I think we might be about to see another. This has been absolutely fantastic. The hairs on the back of my neck are standing to attention. It's a standing ovation from everyone here. He has roared with the heart of an African lion. He's delivered. It's a world record for Joshua Chetagai, the Commonwealth champion. The world champion is the fastest man in history, over six and a quarter miles. And this is a night that will never be forgotten. In my opinion for Joshua is important that he can say at the end of his career that people are thing about him, ah, he's one of the greatest runners we ever saw in history and for him it's also very important that Uganda is proud of him. I want to offer of course the best example I can be to the young ones, to the other guys and uh, I want to be of inspiration to them and uh, I think they like it, you know, 